Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really does help when you do that. So today, folks, I've got a really interesting guitar product to show you, and this is it here. Now, it looks a little bit odd. This is the Integral IM12 from Sam Systems. Now, essentially what this is, is a microphone, but unlike any other microphone, this fits inside your guitar amp between your grill cloth on your amp and the speaker. So when you're putting the speaker in, you put this in first, put the speaker on top of it, bolt them both in place, and it never moves. You can just leave it in your amp long term. Now this has a few advantages. Firstly, you're never gonna kick a mic stand over again because there isn't one, but also, especially if you're a gigging musician, your guitar sound going off to the front of house should be exactly the same at every single gig because it's bolted in place, it will never move, it will always be in the same position relative to the speaker cone. But most importantly, the real selling point of this is isolation. Now, if you know anything about audio engineering or studio production, you'll have come across a few different uh, microphone polar patterns. Cardioid is the most popular to come across, and that means a microphone picks up sound mostly from the front, but a little bit from the back as well. Ribbon mics have a figure of eight pattern, so they pick up sound equally from front and back. This is super cardioid, which means it's incredibly directional and rejects pretty much all sound from around it. So that coupled with the fact it's actually inside your guitar amplifier in a really close proximity to the speaker means you shouldn't get any bleed from anything else on stage with you. So your sound man will be very happy that he doesn't have to try and EQ out kick drums and snare drums and bass guitars and things like that. This naturally filters off a little bit of low end just by nature of being a dynamic microphone over the center of a cone, but it's off axis, so it shouldn't be too buzzy. And it's just a really interesting product. Now I haven't put this in my amp yet, I'm gonna do that now and I'll show you how I fit it, because if I can figure that out, anybody can. And then I'm gonna play a few things with a few different guitars and a few different pedals to put it through its paces and see how it sounds. And at the end, we can have a chat about what we think and where other than live use, this might be appropriate. So I'm gonna get my screwdriver out and get this into my Dr. Z Z-Rec. Okay then, so I've just unscrewed the access panel so that can come off here. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the speaker because that will be coming out. And now unbolt the speaker from the chassis of the amp. Okay, so we've got the uh, IM12 here. So I'm gonna pop that in the amp with the microphone facing in towards where the speaker is going to be. And theoretically, the holes of this should line up nicely. So it will sit like that. And then we're gonna put the speaker on top of it, make sure this cable is out of the way and coming outside, drop the speaker on and then bolt it in place. Okay, so aside from the fact we have an XLR output box here, you wouldn't know it's installed. So I've plugged the speaker back in because that's very, very important. You don't want to fire your ramp up with the speaker unplugged because things will go bang. So I'm gonna get the panel back on here and then let's plug it in and give it a spin. So there we are then. Now the IM12 is all installed. You wouldn't know it's in there. It does feel a little bit weird to be sat here about to play and record, but without having any mic set up. It's the first time I've encountered that. But you'll see there's an XLR lead coming out of the back of the amp and going straight into the mic pre. And it was very easy to install. You just line the holes up. It matches up perfectly with the speaker and the mounting in the amp. You bolt the speaker in and you are good to go. So now let's play a few things with a few guitars to see exactly what this sounds like. So you're not going to be hearing my usual multi-mic setup today with a room mic or anything like that. All you are going to be hearing is the completely direct, untreated sound of the IM12. So without further ado, folks, here we go. <laughs>
we are then. Now, please do comment underneath. Let me know your thoughts on everything today. I love chatting nerdy guitar stuff with you folks in the comment section. Now, of course, when I shot the intro to this video, I hadn't heard the recorded sound of the IM-12 yet because it hadn't been installed. And when I was doing the playing, I was listening to a Celestian Gold punching me in the face. But I've just listened back to the recorded guitar sound from today, and my take on it is it's very thin and super focused in the nasally upper mid-range. Now, that's kind of the point because I've got the paperwork they sent me with the IM-12 here, and it says, Integral units are purposely generous in the mid to high frequencies. As all good sound engineers are aware, adding high frequencies from the desk to a woolly sounding mic will only add hiss. Additionally, they will often roll off the bass to cut through the band mix at gigs. So what the IM-12 is trying to do is essentially preempt what a sound engineer will do to your guitar sound to help it fit in a band context. Now, if you've ever listened to uh, like an isolated guitar track from a famous song on YouTube or whatever, you'll probably think they sound quite thin and super nasal. And that's because when you listen to a pedal demo on this channel, for example, you're listening to an isolated guitar track that's designed to be isolated. So I record the speaker with three close mics, a ribbon mic to get the really thick low end, a dynamic mic to capture the meat and potatoes mid-range, a bit like the IM-12, and a condenser mic to get the really bright, defined high frequencies. And I blend those three with a room mic to add some ambience and realism and three-dimensionalness to everything. And the resulting sound, I think, sounds really good. It's huge and fat and meaty and it's really good to listen to. It just wallops you in the chest. But if you've ever tried to mix a song in Pro Tools, or especially if you've ever tried to mix live sound, you'll know that those sorts of guitar sounds, the really thick, soupy ones, they can cause a lot of problems because on their own, they sound great. But in the context of a band mix, if you've got a thick bass guitar and a kick drum and a snare drum, all taking up the low end content of your track, if you then add a super thick guitar sound to that, everything can become very undefined and cloudy and murky in the low end. So yes, they're absolutely right that in a rock band, for example, we've got a very dense band context, the front of house sound engineer will probably filter off a lot of the low end of your guitar to help it sit in the mix. And the same goes for the high end. If you have a really crystalline sounding guitar, that could start to clash with the cymbals and the pad synths or whatever. So when you listen to an isolated guitar track, they generally sound super focused in the mid range because that's what works in a band mix, even though it's not necessarily the nicest thing to listen to in isolation. It's much more satisfying to listen to the huge fat sound when you listen to the guitar on its own. So that's the concept behind the IM-12. They want the front of house sound engineer to plug an XLR into the IM-12, throw the fader up on their console, and the sound that they need be there. Now, as I said, in a rock mix, that could be exactly what you want. But what if you're playing a clean guitar in an acoustic duo? You've got an acoustic singer and guitarist, and then you're playing some clean lead licks, you're not gonna want a super thin low end and a really nasally mid-range in that situation. You're gonna want a more thick, full frequency sound. So that's one problem I can see with the IM-12. Now, I put it this way. I love the concept of it. Having a mic that fits inside the amp over your speaker and you get consistency in sound from one venue to the next. You get a really good isolation. You don't have bleed from other instruments in your band coming through. The front of house sound engineer is happy because things sound as they want it to with very little work. I love the concept of it, but to be honest, I don't love how it sounds. Now, as I said, part of that will be it's not designed to be listened to on its own. It's designed to work in a band context. I get that. But sometimes you want low end. What happens if um, you, you have your, your band mix, your dense rock mix, and then there's a section in the middle of the set where the guitarist is playing solo? You're not gonna want to have it really thin for that. You're gonna want it to kind of fill the room with all the ambience. I put the, the Meat Maud analog delay on today for a really thick sort of washy sound. And it didn't really come across, I thought, listening to the audio. And almost worse than that, I play the Tele, a 535, and a Les Paul. And sitting here in front of the amp, they sounded very, very different. The characteristics of those guitars was coming through out of the amp. Listening back, they all sounded 
pretty much the same, I thought, you know, with within their gain range of whatever pedal I had on at the time. And when I've mixed live sound in the past, I want, you know, a Les Paul rhythm guitar to sound like a Les Paul rhythm guitar. I want a Strat going through a fuzz face playing lead to sound like a Strat through a fuzz face playing lead. I don't want it all to kind of sound the same. So that was another thing I noticed. It was very hard to pick out any differences between those guitar sounds when the low end isn't there and the really high end isn't there and you just get that kind of boxy sort of nasally mid-range. Now, don't get me wrong, I really, as I said, I love the concept of it. And one thing they say the IM12s can be really good for is doing speaker comparisons. So if you have two IM12s in a 2x12 cab, you can put them over the speakers. The position of the mic relative to the speaker is exactly the same because it's bolted in place. And you can then listen to a very direct recording of that speaker or those two speakers playing the same thing on your guitar to record it on two channels and flip between them. And you don't get any sort of ambience coloring things. You don't get any playing differences coloring things. You don't get the sound of the cab affecting things too much. You just get the speaker. But again, a really important part of testing a speaker for me is how it hangs on to the low end and putting a thick Marshall amp into a greenback or something and listening to how defined and punchy the low end is or isn't and you really wouldn't get that with the im12 you just get that mid-range now the mid-range is an incredibly important set of frequencies in the context of an electric guitar and how a speaker responds in the mid-range is very important that is what will get you heard in a mix absolutely but for me i wouldn't particularly want to use it comparing speakers because you'll only get that mid-range and you won't hear any differences elsewhere, especially in a 2x12 where even in the room you get the sound of the two together. Trying to isolate them and just getting that nasal mid-range, I don't think it would personally tell you a huge amount about those speakers. Now there are situations where I think it could be useful and I don't want to sort of sound like every, I absolutely hate the IM12 whatsoever, I think it could work in certain situations. In a studio recording, if you pair it with other microphones, I think it could work. If you have the ribbon filling in the low end and you have a room mic adding some ambience and then you have the IM12 adding in the mid-range, I think it could be good for that. And even just demoing songs, you can leave it in your amp and kind of forget it's there. You can still mic the amp traditionally if you want to, but let's say you're playing guitar late at night and you come up with a song idea and you want to quickly get it down before you forget it. You don't want to be getting the mic out of the cupboard and opening the box and putting it on the stand and plugging it in and positioning it. You could just plug an XLR in and go, and it's there. You don't have to do any setup with it. And I loved, I have not missed today, not having mic stands sticking out in the room because I'm in a very narrow space here. And if you're doing speaker comparisons, and you've got five speakers, there is nothing worse than getting the first four speakers done and then kicking a mic stand because you get that sinking feeling that you know you have to go back and do it all again because it won't be a fair test if you try and guess where that microphone was. So it, it has its pros for sure. And as I said, I love the concept of it. I just don't love how it sounds and I just don't love how fixed the sound is. If for me, I would want to be able to adjust it to make it work for me, have control over that low end, be able to move it relative to the mic for different tonal effects. I love the concept, but for me, it it could work in a few situations, but personally, there's I can't really think of anywhere I would want to use it over a traditional mic, to be honest. But anyway, that's just my take on it. Please do let me know in the comments underneath whether you agree or fiercely disagree with all of that. I love having a healthy debate with you folks in the comment sections. But for now, thank you ever so much for watching, folks. Please do carry on subscribing. I know I always say it, but it does make a big difference when you do that. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.